Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. Um, episode 29 already, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, I was just actually thinking today, like, what should we do for like our 50th episode or something like that? Or our 100th episode, we'll have to think of something uh, to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Get the celebrate plate out. <laughs> yeah. We've had this plate in our family for the longest time. It's from Pampered Chef, and it does say celebrate on there, and we bring it out Um We've brought it out when the kids were really younger, when something great happened. Uh, they get to eat on the celebrate plate, so maybe you should um, throw that out. They don't really like it. <laughs> they don't. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, we want to say thank you for all the nice comments about our guitar um, <laughs> session. Um, somebody's asking if we can hire out. <laughs> no. We'll, we could no. do Zoom. Uh, we could do Zoom concerts. So yeah, and then someone said, "Why didn't we sing?" Um, you really don't want that. No. Well, you, you can sing. I don't know about that. I mean, I th I think I can sing, but it's probably one of those things, like, if you actually recorded it, it'd be like, that's horrible. <laughs> uh, that's, I'm sure that's not true, but the but I don't think I can do both. I mean, I can't sing anyway, but I don't think I could do both Actually, yeah. I don't I don't think I've actually tried to sing with guitar playing yet. They always tried to get us to do it in our class, but it didn't really work. Yeah, that's true. Um, and you're more, more self-conscious about that, too. Uh Although the bigger problem, I mean, self-conscious, yes, but the bigger problem was just trying to concentrate on doing two things at once. You know, it always seems like it would be easier because, you know, especially if you're familiar with it. Definitely. The I definitely but have. But I don't a, think it, uh, not for me anyway, it's yeah. not easier. Since we've taken guitar lessons, the amount of appreciation I have for musicians went up like a billion because it is just so difficult, not only the, to learn all the songs, memorize all, everything, but the stamina to play for you know hours and hours. Um, I mean, you've gone to see Bruce Springsteen, and that was like a four-hour concert practice. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of nuts to be able to even just practicing for an hour. I'm just like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> they do My take arm hurts. they do take breaks, but that's yeah, true. It's, it's about a four-hour, three and a half, four hours. Yeah. 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 And no opening act. It's just them. That's awesome. I guess I didn't know that. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I mean, I've never seen them with an opening act. Because they play for so long, they probably don't want to have like right. a five-hour concert right. and have to move all the equipment around. Yeah. Um, a lot of popular comments on our snowfall, first snowfall yeah. uh, of this year. And last, we talked about a few episodes back that last year at Halloween was the first snowfall. And I, in my head, I was like, oh, we're not going to get snow before Halloween. And sure enough, it, we had snow flurries two days in a row this week. We had snow twice this week, but it didn't accumulate. Um, other places, though, have had like, you know, so that they had a shovel. We didn't have yeah. that. Thank goodness. And we, but the problem is the last couple of years, uh, we've had snow well into April. So, I mean, it's bad enough when it starts in October, but we've actually had like legit snow yeah. middle to late April. Because his birthday is the end of April. So you always remember like when it's been inclement weather. That's not why I remember it. No. <laughs> oh, you don't? Because it's. <laughs> no, because you have to go out and shovel it. Well, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's true. And you're like, why am I still doing and this? And you'll shovel, you'll shovel snow in, you know, the middle of April or whatever. And then a few days later, it'll be 65 or 70 right. degrees. So and in hardly others, seems uh, worth it. Sad news the garden is now gone. The garden is defunct. Yeah. So I ripped up probably three, quarter, three quarters of it. Actually, I take that back. Like 90% of it is all ripped up now. So sadly, uh, it was a great bounty, the b biggest That's bounty true. we've had this year in my career. Uh, <laughs> so that was kind Your of exciting. Your career as a farmer? My career as a farmer. Uh, I did call it our farm, even this little plot of land <laughs> back there. Uh, but I was super happy how great it turned out. So um, sadly, um, and actually that was probably good that I did it over the weekend because then it snowed. So everything that was on there would have di died anyway, probably. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't It was just that it snowed. I mean, it was cold. Yeah, super it cold. It was uh, not pleasant at all. But it's better than um, having... Uh, a thousand degrees in the middle of the fall. We've had that too. Yeah, we've I had think I'm eighty done degrees with... in in October. Too. Yeah, I think I'm done with that. But then I'm not for ready for like twenty degrees either. So there's that. But we don't have we don't have the easy transition from summer mm -mm. to fall to winter. It it'll be hot and then it'll be just nasty. Now, now it's winter. Ugly. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, even wore my winter coat this week going out, so that was kind of gross. Um, and we're planning on hopefully voting tomorrow in, uh, beforehand. Just curious, uh, if you guys are, have already voted or if you're planning to vote early, not on election day. Um, 
we think it's going to be safe because uh, it's a pretty big area where they have the voting. So we'll see what happens. If the yeah, if the weather holds, the only downside is you have to line up outside. But yeah, the the um, the village hall where they hold the early voting is um, it's got a sort of a large plaza, so they can people can line up outside and not be right on top of each other. But then inside. It's like three stories, but yeah, it's like a big atrium. But there's a big atrium, so and it's sort of L shaped, and so most of it, this the ceiling is you know three stories up, and there are offices on one side and just this big open atrium and on the other, and that's where they have it set up. We've gone early voting there before, mm-hmm. and I liked it just because you're not right on top of people. Yes, but that's even better under the current circumstances. The only problem is it seems like everyone in the world is voting early this year. Yeah. So the lines are long and Yeah, this is like been really the biggest sure. early voting uh ever. Our son actually did the ballot. Um so he already has mailed it in mailed it in. So that's done. Um and so got, kudos to that. Got confirmation that they got it. That's the thing about I mean it's most places it's probably too late for that, but if you did do the mail in voting most states, I think, you can check to verify that they got it and accepted it. Right. Sometimes they get rejected because of signatures and things like that. Um, in most states, the best move, if you were planning to vote by mail but haven't actually put it in the mail, is actually go and physically drop it off in one of the drop boxes because then you know that Definitely they got it's it. there. And there's, you know, there's a lot of confusion right now because uh, there have been some, at least one kind of, odd Supreme Court decision that seemed not to necessarily get the fact that a lot of states, you know, in the past, absentee ballots, as long I think they had to be received, no, I'm sorry, I think in most states they had to be mailed by election day or within some time frame beforehand. But a lot of times they're counted after, because as long as you meet whatever the deadline is, right. they're counted when they come in. There's millions of military ballots that come in by absentee. And so it's not at all uncommon for votes to be counted afterwards. And no state certifies results on the day of the election or the next day. It always takes a few days. Definitely. So when you're watching election returns and they, you know, the media calls it for a candidate or the candidate gives a concession speech or an acceptance speech, or whatever, that's based on projections. That's never based on a final, you know, certified right. vote. So, um, this year, it's more likely to be a bit crazy because there's more people voting by mail. Different states have different standards. You know, you don't necessarily have to meet the old criteria for absentee voting, given the pandemic and all that. Whatever. But the point is, is that it's really not that out of the ordinary um, that the election, the actual official results are not uh, are not announced for a few days. Right. But, you know, the media projections in, in the past have, except for the Dewey defeats Truman headline <laughs> from the whatever. Huge um, mistake. <laughs> the 40s. Um, aside from that, you know, the media projections tend to be pretty accurate. So, you know, but in any event, I, I, the one thing I would say about it is, is that uh, there's absolutely no reason to panic if we don't know on election night. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason to be concerned. Um, my guess is that we will know shortly after that, you know, within a few days. And then, of course, there could be legal challenges and all that. Right. Who knows? But I mean, by the way, just so people don't panic about that either. You know, in most states, if the margin of victory is is within a certain very small percentage range, there's an Sometimes there's an automatic recount, so even a recount is not necessarily anything to be alarmed about. It, it it may happen by operation of law. Within a certain range, they automatically do a recount. Or it may be that within a certain range, you have an automatic right to contest the results, and sometimes there's lawsuits, whatever. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants that to happen. Mm-hmm. But it's not the end of the world if it does. You know, what happened in 2000 was a bit crazy because there was some maybe bad strategic decisions. That Wasn't the, it like a couple of weeks? Well, it was by early December. So it took a little more than a couple of weeks. But, you know, there were some strategic decisions that the campaigns made in terms of uh, uh, what to ask for in the recount and what challenges were made. And 
that complicated the case. I don't want to go into all the background, but that complicated the case. So it took a little while to, to sort that out. And there were appeals to the Florida Supreme Court along the way, whatever. It all worked out. Um, I mean, not everyone was happy with the result, but the fact is right. there was a resolution. That's all I mean. Um, the same thing will happen here. You know, there's going to be a resolution if there's if there are legal challenges. Normally, there's only legal challenges when there's, you know, critical states that are within a certain range. So that'll either happen or it won't. There may be legal challenges, but it'll all get sorted out. And I think we're um, equally excited because our youngest is voting for the first time. Right. So that is very exciting. And... Uh, she mentioned Almost. on um, college campuses, they well, at least on her campus, it's like all over the place, voting, voting, voting. Um, almost 40 years from the day, or to the 40 years to the day oh, that yeah. I voted the first time, because my first election was November 4th, 1980, and hers will be November 3rd, yeah. 2020. That's so wild. off by one day. One day. Okay, that's a good... 40 um, years to we'll the day. We'll have to remind to tell yeah. that to Claire. <laughs> Well, she knows it's 40 years. That's true. I don't think I pointed out how close the day. But it's always the first Tuesday in November, so yeah, it can only be within a certain range anyway. Um, so, yeah, we were just kind of just thinking about things that are going on in our life right now. Uh, we are going to um, talk a little bit about, um, have a little section of family life and uh, for our immediate family. And one of the things I was thinking about talking about is, uh, and you might have this in your own family too, is what if your children don't want to eat the food that you want to <laughs> eat, that you want to make? Obviously, for those who don't know, I'm a food blogger and I have a food blog on the side and so love to cook. Uh, and our middle son who... I think was he was a freshman in high school. Yeah, it was. Uh, took health class and came home and decided right then he was going to be vegetarian. That was it. <laughs> they they saw a documentary, a, uh, and the documentary was about meat production. <laughs> they didn't like kind of turned so off <laughs> yeah. by that, and and then it, actually his health teacher had had three heart attacks, so that was another um, thing that was his uh, teacher became vegetarian. So. Uh, we were like, all right, let's do this, you know, kind of thing. But um, we did have one rule, which has been in place the whole time, and he's 22 now, and he makes his own food. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which is weird in the beginning to think, like, um, that you make your kid, like, if they want to eat differently, then here's, you know, you can well, make it. Well, it wasn't anything mean. It's just... No, not, not at all. But um, it, it's actually been a blessing in disguise because uh, he's an awesome cook now because he's been doing it forever. Uh, then there was a stint where, um, he thought he was gluten intolerant. So he did gluten free on top of vegetarian for several years and then, um, has been vegan probably for the last four years, I want to say. Yeah. Um, so we just got your thoughts on that. Like if you've had kids who have, um, decided to go that path, did you, um, were you on board right away? Do you let them find their own way? Uh, get busy in the kitchen with you. And the way we've worked it, which has been good, he's uh, commutes to school, to college, so he's usually home for dinner, and obviously now he is because we're all home. Uh, but I usually will tell him how long my dinner is going to take, and then he plans accordingly so that we're all done at the same time. So that works out pretty well. And he's actually gotten pretty creative. Um, and then Claire, our youngest, decided to become vegan over the summer. So now they're both on their own. <laughs> but that, now the, the only problem is when we order pizza on Friday, they have to figure out their own. Th and they m usually make their own. They make their own pizza, calzone, ba baby pizzas, big pizzas. Uh, so, yeah, they are very creative. And then I said it's actually turned into now... Um, where our son orders his own food on Amazon Fresh. We give him a budget, and then he plans accordingly, which I think is also good because now he knows, A, how much food costs because when your kids don't right. go to the store, they have no idea until they get on their own and, like, I don't have They have no money. idea if they do go to the store because we're paying for it. But, yeah, that's true. They just throw things in the so, car. Yeah. <laughs> and they just fill up. Um, so it's gone good uh, the whole time, but it was just one thing that I wanted to touch on to see um, if you guys have had that in your families or with kids. Uh, but we will definitely um, check back later, and next week we're still planning to do Instagram Live during the... Uh, a a nonpartisan, non non-political... Take a break from that. Take a break from everything. Come have fun, <laughs> and um, that'll be 8 p.m., Central Time on election Tuesday. night. So we'll give you a warning ahead of time. Uh, so we hope you join us. See you next time.